Well, here's another laser video. After I uh, purchased that first Ortor laser from GearBest and made a video about it, they actually contacted me and they asked me if I would be interested in getting a, um, a new Ortor laser that was coming out that's a much bigger laser. And um, of course I said yes. So uh, it did take about seven weeks to get here though by the time it was the order was placed and I got it. Uh, I guess it's due to the coronavirus and the Chinese New Year's and, you know, a bunch of crazy stuff going on in the world now. So, and anyhow, it arrived in perfect shape. Uh, once it shipped, it was here in three days from Hong Kong. And it arrived in perfect shape. And as you can see, this one here is kind of a kit form. It's not like the uh, Ortor one where you just had two pieces to bolt together. This one actually comes... Uh, you know just packed in a box like that and the parts are all disassembled because it is a fairly large unit and um, you know I can see where they'd want to break it down to make sure it got shipped safely so everything was well packaged in there um, you know well protected and stuff and it, it almost looked like uh, from the from the markings on the screws and stuff like they had uh, previously assembled and tested the unit which I think is a good thing so there it is. It was packed well, and here are the parts, and it's uh, time to start putting them together. And you can see it's uh, it's got the same 15-watt laser as my other one, but it looks like a little different laser, though, when you look at the mounting configuration on it. Got a very similar uh, control card, and it comes with all the parts you need to get going and, you know, a couple little pieces of wood there to play with and stuff, too. It, uh, you see it's got a couple timing belts that are shipped with it and the motor is not assembled and the uh, hardware is included along with the uh, wrenches needed. The only thing you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver to complete the assembly. And it did come with a really good assembly manual so I'm just going to you know, walk through putting it together if anybody's interested in it. If not you can you know, skip halfway through this and there's more videos of it burning things but it goes together really easy the um just got some of those extruded aluminum rails and a couple corner braces that go in for extra support so you know basically you just start by uh following the directions and these 25 millimeter screws go in the uh corners and you put two of them together like that get to that point and then you have to slip a couple of t-nut there are five millimeter T nuts in in the rail before you put the last piece on. So the front and the back each get two of these little nuts slipped in place, and then you can see the last rail goes on. And there's that little corner reinforcing bracket that goes in there, and that slips in there before you put the screw in place. So it's really uh, it's it, probably about 20 25 minutes of assembly time, and um. You want to have a nice flat surface to to work on too. I'm doing it on my table saw, and there you can see I've got it laid out nice and flat. And before I tighten those corner screws, I just got a nice straight piece of wood to pull everything flush and you know hold it flush. And tighten that screw, and then I went back with these little corner brackets, and I found out you you, t you tighten them a little bit at a time on each side, and they pull pull together good. And then you just go back and you know crank them down. So that's uh you know that's pretty simple. You just have to repeat that for the four corners. Now, when I got done, I put a square on it, and uh, one rail on the left here. I didn't get square in the two corners, but the other sides were perfect. And it turned out that the um, I put, got my straight edge out to see if I could figure out what was going on, and it turned out that the one aluminum extrusion on that side there had a I don't know maybe a ten thousand, fifteen thousand bow in it, but um, once I put this, slid this carriage on like you do next, it locks right in there and it's all adjusted properly. It, it seemed to go up, it seemed to straighten out. So, you know, there was no problem. So you slide that carriage on and then you have to start the timing belts and the two back brackets here have a little, little, uh, rectangular slot in them that the timing belt pulls through with the, uh, teeth facing down. And then you put the, um, uh, the final screw into the center of that rail with a big washer on it that actually uh, holds the belt in place when you tension it. 
Now in this one I started by putting the screw in the rail first and then uh, trying to get the one in the sliding nut second, which actually turned out being the hardest way to do it. You have to try to get that nut slid into place. You can't move the, the foot bracket. So I, I learned from my mistake in the, um, you know, the other side I did. I started that nut first. So there they are. The two, the two backs are, you know, they're basically the same, just opposite. And you have to make sure that you get that belt started through the, um, that little square slot, rectangular slot, I mean. And we'll work on the front side next. And you can see that these um, belts have to be pulled under that first wheel. They have to go up around the gear on the motor. And then they get pushed back down into that slot in the channel. And uh, stretched out to the front. Now I found out that it's easiest to do this with a pair of long nose pliers to grab it. And pull it through and get started. It's really, uh, you know, it's really a simple thing to do. And then this one has the uh, exact same foot as the back two are on this side of it here. Um, so same thing, just, uh, you know, put the uh, timing belt through and start the screws. And then uh, it's time you have to go back and you have to tension the belt good. And now you want to make sure that there is uh, absolutely no play in that belt when you're done no stretch or anything else so just uh, that screw there goes in the corner and that's the one with the washer on it and then you have to uh, just kind of leave it loose just start it loosely and then just start pulling on the belt and um, I pulled it as hard as I could. It was kind of hard to grab onto, and I, I had to screw a little tight so it wouldn't move. But once you get it, just really pull on it so it's uh, stretched like a rubber band. And then just tighten that screw down, and it stays right in position, tensioned. And then you go back and just I just crank down the other screw. Now this other side you have to feed the belt through the same way up and over the uh, the timing belt gear there, and back down into the track. Same thing. Um, it's really nice the way they've got the uh, single motor driving both sides with that little shaft that goes across here. Saves a lot of headache and uh, aggravation of having two motors and sinking them and stuff. So. That one gets pulled through, but this gets mounted differently in the front. There's a, uh, a limit switch there, and you have to slide a nut in that front corner facing up on the extrusion. And then there's a little D-shaped hole that the belt pulls through to, to hold the belt on that side. And basically it's the same thing. There's a screw that goes down through there and captures the, it actually holds the switch in place, plus it captures the belt. Now, one thing I found out is um, once you start that screw, you can't move the belt again. I got the screw started and wound up having to pull it out, screw right out of here so I could take a little more slack out of the belt there. So I didn't get the belt tensioned on this side, but I got the uh, switch located, uh, you know, just right near the end there where they showed it in the manual. And um, there I just, you know, had to pull it back out to get a little more tension on it. But I got the switch mounted back there where they show it in the manual. And then I decided I'm best to uh, just go back to the other side where it's easy to tension from. So I got that mounted in and then I'm just going to go back over here and loosen up this rear screw. So that the washer comes free of the, the belt and uh, give it a good yank. And basically that's a, you know, you know, the one drive system done on there. Then the control board goes on the front and uh, you use that one of those nuts that you slid in in the initial assembly. And then another one just goes right into the center of the end of that channel there. And um, I mean all the hardware was here, everything was complete, nothing missing, so... 
I think uh, I really am impressed with this uh, Ortor company because we had problems with the um, the power levels on the first ones and they actually brought people in over Chinese New Year's to um, come up with new firmware to fix it in a matter of a couple days it just amazed me how fast they reacted and then um, time to put the stepping motor in and this one you just have to the belts in place already you just have to get the pulley under the belt up there wrapped around it and start the four screws now I had to put a magnet on the end of my screwdriver because you're kind of back in there my fingers are big and don't fit in spots like that anymore so I just started all four screws and then I went back and uh, just tightened them all up and the belt still still was slightly loose it didn't you know wasn't perfectly tensioned here you can see there's some play in it you don't want that so then all they did is I just went back and um, they have a similar setup on the uh, that cross slide there to tension that belt. And you just have to uh, loosen the, the Phillips head screw up. And then the belt comes loose and you can actually give it a good pull and you know get it nice and taut. So in reality, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver to assemble this along with the tools that they give you. And if you have a little pair of needle nose pliers, I found they help out. That's all tension. Now here's the laser. Now it's a little different mounting than the other the other um, laser. This one looks a little more solid the way it goes on there. It just bolts right on um, tight. And there's a couple sets of holes there for different positions. Now I just grabbed a second one from the bottom because that's what it looked like in the manual but I just put it together loosely and uh, decided I was going to check it first before I figured out what it was someday I'm thinking about maybe just uh, putting a slide on there so I can um, adjust the laser distance to the material easily for different material thicknesses rather than having to pick this unit up so there I put those put in those screws and it was just not the 55 millimeters that I needed um so I just went back and moved it up to the next batch of screws and then it goes on just like the laser did on the other one just um, you know four of those little cap nuts hold it in place and everything fits together perfect it uh, you know no problem no interference or anything and one thing I can't stress enough is to make sure you get a good pair of glasses for when you use these lasers because they can blind you these are very dangerous uh, category laser and they can blind you and even you don't want kids or you don't want pets in the room because it can hurt pets eyes too so you know you have to use a lot of care because these things come with no no real um, eye protection or safety on them so then they um, come with the cables and they're all you know they all plug right in they uh, there's only one way you can plug them in and then you have to go back after they're plugged in and uh, they they have a little tie wrap point that they show you on the uh, assembly thing you put tie wraps just to make sure they're secured good and strain relief so they don't get broken during the um, all the moving so I got that all put together and then I had this old stand from that Harbor Freight router table that I got rid of and um, I decided I was going to I put some wheels on it and decided I was going to use it for this laser and I actually made a nice plywood top for it put some polyurethane on it rounded the edges over and there you can see it fits really nice you can also see I've got my other little laser I'm gonna hang off the back with an adjustable shelf so I can um, do like drawers and stuff like that and do thicker projects with it too so it's gonna be a multi-purpose table in the end and then I decided to plug it in power it up and uh-oh it uh, sounded like a coffee grinder running um, there was a problem so I just pulled the power out there and I figured it was a bad limit switch is what I was thinking or something like that uh, it's a little tiny switch couldn't hear any clicking or anything on it and it's on a little PC board there and my fingers are really too big to get in at anything so what I did is I just kind of disassembled that area with the screws and uh, put the meter on the back to check the switch and yes the switch was working perfect so then I just uh, decided to pull the board apart and make sure that all the you know the connections were soldered good and that everything was plugged in good 
and that was all plugged in good in the end it was uh one of those wires right there on that limit switchboard that uh, wasn't fully engaged in the connector it was just stuck in the shell and once i got that pushed in with some needle nose everything worked perfect so it was just something that um must have dislodged when i plugged it in or something but no big problem then it was time to, you know, get the power and the reset button and uh, do the upgrade to the firmware. Now, the new ones will have the firmware upgraded, but um, this one didn't. So, I, uh, you know, I upgraded the firmware and went back and I had to hit the reset. And then the power and everything was all done there. And then to check it, I started up Laser G GRBL and you go in there and you look and you make sure that the... Um, it says 9,000 on the uh, the maximum speeds there. So then you're all set to go. And I figured I'd grab a couple of the you know, old artworks I had and just try burning them. And um, I used the settings from the small laser, but they were, this this is slightly different. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I did create a lot of smoke and I really have to put exhaust on uh, both of these lasers. So right out of the box here, everything looked good, and I just, you know, I played with it and ran them a different speed until I figured I had a good setting down on it, good baseline. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's really a nice working little laser, too, just like the other one. Then I wanted to go back and um, check the gantry because you can get those timing belts out of sync a little bit. It can be out of square on the overall um, squareness of the machine. So what I did is I just burned a, um, a horizontal line and a vertical line on a piece of cardboard to double check it. Now the first pass there, I didn't burn it deep enough, so I went back and I did a second pass on it actually so I could see it. Because you can see it just such a thin cut. It cut halfway through, but um, didn't leave much of a mark. And I put the square on that one, and it looked pretty good. But I went back, and I did a second burn, and then I took it off and took the big square to it. And uh, turned out that I had uh, gotten it perfect. I mean, I guess it sort of self-aligns, but you always want to check this anyway. And if there is a problem with alignment, you can just loosen one of those set screws and rotate one shaft a little and check it again until you get it perfect. So now I'm all set up and ready to go. And do my first burn and this is some three millimeter birch plywood and years ago my wife had written a poem um the house that we lived in uh, right down the road there was a swamp that a business filled in and built on and uh the next year the uh, geese were all homeless so she sat down and wrote a poem about it and there you see i've got my filters on trying to get the smoke out of here and I just um, figured I'd, I'd burn that into something so it would be around forever. And it would be a good test for this, for the capability of it. So I actually um, I drew it up in my Cameo 3 Silhouette software, which I like so much better than the Lightburn. Lightburn is really good for, um, you know, running the laser and controlling it and just modifying things you've done. But uh, it's not really a great drawing program. And I'm still, you know, the, I'm still trying it. I'm probably going to wind up buying it next week because my trial is over then. But, um, you know, it's, I wish it had a little bit better drawing package with it. But you want to make sure that, um, you know, you do have some capabilities to uh, put artworks together and stuff if you get into a laser like this. Now you can see it's doing a beautiful job and I'm doing it at 300 lines per inch there. And I had a problem where it gave me an error when it did the finished up the uh, lettering there before it went and did the next one. But that went away and, you know, everything's fine now. And I did burn a nice deep, um, nice embossed lettering in there and everything. And I'm really happy with the way that came out. And I will be doing a, a video about framing that in the future. And then I started um, burn, trying to burn a picture. And I had, you see, I had to get the HEPA filter out there. I'm starting to get pretty smoky in here and uh, not spending a lot of time by it. I'm um, spending a lot of time upstairs and I'll come down and check on it. But um, you can see this picture here. I just ran with the uh, light burn settings that came up originally. And they were a dither um, in the speeds and stuff. So uh, I have to learn how to edit photos better to uh, burn them on the laser. But you'll see that I did this a couple different ways. The first one with the um, 
the dither what came up and then this one was a um, Jarvis at a 4,000 millimeters a minute speed 100% power and you can see that's slightly different results for the same picture and then I actually went back and I did it again at um, I did a Jarvis and I slowed it down to 2,500 millimeters a minute which my other laser does a good job with but this one seems to come out a little bit darker so I'm gonna have to um, work out new settings for this one but in the end uh, you can see these uh, pictures are actually uh, tough to, to figure out how to do plan on spending some time to learn how to do them but they don't look bad when you're done from uh, you know 10 feet away they look good then I was starting to um, this thing's a 400 millimeters by 430 millimeter uh, cut area so having trouble getting things lined up so what I decided to do is put a 25 millimeter grid on light burn and then put a 25 mil burn a 25 millimeter grid onto the piece of plywood that matches it exactly so I can see the location on the screen of exactly where everything's going to be if I want to do multiple objects or anything like that and there you can see I've got that um, to match a screen grid and this will make it a lot easier for me in the future to um, to set things up and get good cuts so I'm also gonna make corner blocks to locate it so that the machine can't move anymore now I had some people ask me about if uh, these machines work on leather and I found a piece of leather and this is a rough side out I did that oh my god it smells like burning hair when you're you're doing this stuff so um, I definitely need a exhaust um, I wouldn't recommend doing this inside but you can see the leather came out pretty good I could have uh, run it a little bit faster and then I decided to flip it and do it on the other side and uh, the shiny side of the leather and that came out a nice fine line um, really came out a lot clearer it's kind of hard to see in the camera but that did come out nice too so it will work on leather it does a pretty good job on it, but you really need ventilation no matter what you do. Then I did a stupid thing, and they give you this little piece of uh, plastic with paper on both sides. And I had people ask me, what happens if you do plastic? And I wasn't going to, but I decided to throw a piece on there, and I could not believe the fumes that came off of it. I had to put a um, mask on. It was just so bad. Uh, you never want to do plastic without good ventilation. I, I'll never do plastic on this again, I can tell you now. But in the end, it did um, it did uh, heat it up on one side and warp it a little bit. But once I peeled the paper off, what I could get off of it actually um, looked pretty good. If I clean that up a little bit, it'll be a nice engraving. So um, you really need, it will do plastic, but you really need a good ventilation on it. So in the end, I'm going to say this is a um, a great great laser. It's just like the little one that I have. Um, it works just as good. Uh, you know, does a nice job. It's easy to use and um, seems to be reliable because some of those burns took like six hours with no problems or anything. So, you know, it's definitely a um, a fun toy to have. And the little one's actually uh, still going to see a lot of use too with marking uh, items that I can't lay flat like that. So this bigger one really is great for if you're going to do like signs or you're going to do um, like a checkerboard you want to make or you want to uh, just take and make a jigsaw puzzle out of a big printout of a photo or something like that. So, you know, it's got its uses. They both do. And it's definitely going to be another great addition to my shop that you'll probably see in many more videos to come. And, um, and I just, it, it really did do a really beautiful job here, especially on, you know, like this plaque that I wanted to preserve. And this is the perfect way to do it. Um, it's not a piece of paper that somebody's just going to tear up and throw away someday, hopefully. And I understand that pretty soon, um, Ortor is going to set up a forum for all their users because they're, you know, really starting to uh, sell a lot of these things and people run into a lot of questions. So I'll put some links uh, down in the description to these on GearBest. But like I said, I don't know about shipping right now with all that's going on in that section of the world. And, you know, it's even starting to come to America now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.